Frederick Clerk is going to be speaking about insights into carbon tech and decarbonization. Frederick currently leads the Carbon to Value Initiative at the Urban Future Lab, a multi-year, multi-stakeholder program focused on building the carbon tech ecosystem in partnership with Greentown Labs and Fraunhofer USA. He has a chemical engineering background with over 15 years of experience in clean tech commercialization, innovation, startups, and management consulting. Thank you, David. Um, can you hear me? We can hear you. Awesome. We can see you now. Great. Well, uh, I can't see the audience, but it's a pleasure to be with you. And I know it's it's a, it's a bit late in the evening, so hang tight. I hope my uh, presentation will be inspiring and refreshing, and then you'll, you'll get to enjoy the real refreshments with the happy hour, I guess. Um, not sure about the slides. Do you uh, see my slides? Or okay, it's coming up. Perfect. Um, great. So let me just adjust my screen here, and I'll be good to go. So yeah, my name is Frederick. Clark. I'm the program director for the Carbon to Value Initiative, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be speaking a little bit about what is carbon tech and how we can play a role in decarbonizing our economy. You can go to the next slide. Um, so C2V um, is an innovation program uh, where we combine um, three main different perspectives, the uh, corporate perspective, the government perspective, and a non-for-profit or carbon tech expert perspective uh, to work with uh, startups. So our mission is really around building an ecosystem, meaning you know, creating fruitful business relationships between different entities. Um, and especially supporting innovation and early stage companies uh, that have, um, you know, disruptive uh, technologies and innovation. Um, the way we do that, the way we help these startups is through uh, identifying collaboration opportunities with members of the Carbon Technology Council, the CLC. Um, these are the logos you see on the right of the slides. And really it's this multi-stakeholder group um, that avoids, uh, you know, sort of building silos early on in, in, in a new industries and also allows the startups to tap into a wide um, range of perspectives and expertise and that they need to, uh, to develop and, and de-risk and, and ultimately be, be uh, uh, you know, fundraising and deploying the technology. You can go to the next slide. And who is behind, you know, the Carbon to Buy Initiative? We are organization that are experts in supporting early stage entrepreneurs in developing technologies. Um, so you have the Urban Future Lab, which is a climate tech innovation hub here in New York. Uh, and my colleague, Pat Sapinsley, is actually in the room. So if you have more questions, feel free to connect with her at the happy hour. Um, we have supported 70, 70 companies that have raised $1.3 billion. Uh, we, have, we are running this program with Greentown Labs in partnership with Greentown Labs the largest incubator for climate tech in North America, um, having incubated over 400 companies. And finally, we, have, we are also working with Fraunhofer. Uh, Fraunhofer is a large um, applied R&D group uh, that has a global footprint and is helping us betting um, the scientific and uh, the technical aspect of these uh, emerging technologies. You can go to the next slide. Uh, we, we, a, a large part of our, our support um, comes from the New York State and specifically NYSERDA that has really a vision to build a carbon tech industry here in the New York State. Um, they've, uh, you know, we're matching funding from NYSERDA with corporate support and they have a significant uh, climate target as probably many of you know. Uh, some estimates uh, about, you know, the role of carbon removal and carbon tech is that about 15% of New York State's emission will need uh, some uh, the role of, of carbon tech. So it will cover about 15% of this emission. Today, it's about 200 million tons of CO2 in 2019. So 15% of, of that um, could be, could be a, a use case for carbon tech in, in the New York State. You can go to the next slide. So what do we, you know, what, what is carbon tech? I think that's probably a, a good question that you're wondering uh, what exactly the scope is. You want to think about carbon management as a whole, you know, and CO2 as a resource instead of a waste. Right now, we're just emitting a lot of CO2. It goes to the atmosphere. 
and it's it's creating global warming. Um, what if we could capture CO two, whether you know it's from a point source, from a factory, for instance, or directly get CO two from the air back into um, or sequester the CO two, basically uh, avoid that it goes back into the atmosphere. And to to look at carbon tech, it's it's really a portfolio of solutions. You um, you have you know nature based solutions like forest, soil, ocean. You have engineered solution like direct air capture. Um, this is a whole gamut of possibilities. And of course, the CO2 can be sequestered, can be you know, uh, put under the ground. It can be also used in a product that has a value on the market. Um, and that's really something that we really look a, a, a lot about is what is the value of CO2 as a product uh, instead of a waste. So you have all sorts of processes that can take that CO2 uh, and convert it into added value uh, and products. And I will talk, I will provide a lot of examples in this presentation. So you can go to the next slide. Why, you know, why carbon tech is important? There is definitely an economic driver. So it's a trillion dollar market opportunity. I will show you a little bit um, what's what's behind this number. Um, it is critical uh, to avoid climate change. Um, as you know, we need to decarbonize, we need to reduce about uh, Eighty percent of our emissions, we need to reduce them by 2050. Um, but we'll still have about 20 percent of emissions, and so we need to think about, you know, how do we create the net, net balance for these 20 percent, and also how do we do we clean up legacy emissions, historic emissions. So there is today very few, if no, scenarios that gets us to net zero without carbon capture and carbon removal at a gigaton scale. And really it's a whole new industry that needs to be built and we need to start now. And that's what we, we do uh, starting with C2V. It's, it is very early. And so there is in a way a lot of risk, but there's there is also a lot of potential for growth um, and to create competitive ad advantage. So we're seeing a lot of players um, positioning themselves in, in, in carbon tech. You, you can go to the next line. Um, here is an insight, an interesting report. If you want to learn more about the market potential of CO2 as a platform molecule, a Carbon 180 released that report a couple of um, years ago, and it sort of like identifies all the different products you can make from CO2, you know, from building materials where the CO2 gets really sequestered into cement. That's a really interesting application where you have both economic value and full climate impact. Uh, of course, fuels, you know, you can use the carbon in the CO2, uh, combine it with hydrogen and make uh, jet fuel, for instance, with, which we know is a major, um, it's a very hard industry to decarbonize. Uh, you can make plastics uh, from CO2. So, you know, like thinking about uh, packaging materials and bottles, um, you can make that with recycled CO2 instead of uh, additional um, new oil. Um, you can make chemicals, uh, food, agriculture, textile. There is virtually not many products you can do uh, with CO2. It's a matter of like how emerging the technology is and you know where do you enter on the value chain and what's kind of your, um, your, your competitive advantage. But that's, it's, it's a nice kind of overview of different applications, um, at least on the theory side. I will give you more practical example with the companies we have helped. So you can go to the next slide. Um, so we just saw, you know, like kind of a market driver. There is also a huge policy drivers. Uh, no one here is, is, you know, you've all heard about the recent uh, bill passed. What's interesting with the infrastructure bill in, this, in the IRA, as you probably know, is like works hand in hand. So the infrastructure bill um, provides CAPEX support over $10 billion of dollar, um, to only for carbon management. So the DAC hubs is, is one, demonstration programs is another one. And overall, all, all, all these support mechanisms provide about $10 billion of, of, of grants for new facilities that can uh, capture CO2, convert CO2, or sequester CO2. Of course, there will be some private matching, right? So it's actually much more than $10 billion that will get invested, but it's definitely a huge accelerant. And then the hand in hand with IRA, IRA is providing sort of cap, uh, OPEC support, right, at the EBITDA level. So it's going to provide uh, financial support over several years uh, per ton of CO2 that you capture or that you use, a credit that is between $60 and $180 per ton, depending on the conditions. And that really supports the overall plant economics, makes, you know, the first, these first facilities 
uh, very um, sort of hard to build, hard to operate, don't, don't make a huge margin. And this is why uh, DRA is, is here for, is to, to absorb the, the additional cost of these first facilities. And as you build them more and more capacity, as with any industrial processes, your unit economics and your cost co goes down and you will less and less need the IRA and so on. And you'll be able to really compete against an incumbent. Um, so this is you know, transformational policy drivers have been passed and the industry is gonna, going to benefit a lot from this. You, you can go to the next line. Uh, in New York State specifically, two pieces of legislation to keep in mind specific to uh, carbon management. The first one um, incentivize uh, lower carbon footprint of building materials in cement and concrete. This is a bill that is already passed and is now uh, creating favorable conditions for um, operators that use CO2 and sequester CO2 into concrete. And so hence are able to uh, advertise a, a better carbon footprint. And the second one is not yet passed, but the idea that the government can also be a big buyers of carbon removal credits in addition to the private you know, companies on the voluntary markets. If, if that needs to go to a gigaton sort of scale market, everyone needs to participate and government can be one of the large uh, buyers. So that's something that some um, organizations are, are sort of advocating for and it's, it's being drafted and, and, and you know, um, um, ad, ad, advocate or just pushed for. You can go to the next line. Um, this is just a quick snapshot just to show you, you know, how out there there's about 800 carbon tech companies um, and we selected 18. So over the last two years, uh, it's an annual cycle, quite competitive. We review about 200 applications, so 100 per year, and we select, you know, um, around um, eight companies per, per year. Uh, and you can go to the next slide to give you an example of of folks that we select, that we work with. So these are all the startups that we have worked here uh, for over the past two years. And you can see they are in different blocks because they are covering different parts of the value chain and different sort of theory of change and different markets and different types of technologies. So this is something that we care a lot about is, is technology diversity. Um, they also have different technology readiness levels, so different maturity. None of these companies are, you know, at a, at a commercial scale, the way you would think about solar, for instance, but some are much later stage, like carbon free, carbon upcycling, you know, air company. They are like more past series A and they start to have revenues and they, they kind of uh, have a pass to their first of a kind commercial plant. And some others are uh, still more in the early stage of the development. They are all out of the lab. So it's been proven scientifically, it works. Um, it's a matter of technology scale up. Um, and so these are all the 18 are really exciting companies. I would encourage you to look them up. Um, and, but I will provide you two examples that I think are interesting, especially in the context of the New York market. So let's go to the next slide and talk a little bit about carbon quest um so if you could yeah carbon quest a very interesting company they do carbon capture for a uh, building so this is um uh, 1970 broadway um you know multi-family multi-residential uh, family building with about 400,000 square feet uh, obviously it's, it's uh, you know it's going to be um subject to local law 97, which if you don't know what it is, it's a, basically a carbon uh, cap and trade program for buildings uh, emissions. So you're gonna have to pay a penalty if you are over a certain threshold of CO2 emissions. And thanks to Carbon Quest, um, they will capture you know up to 70% of the CO2 coming from the natural gas boilers that makes the, the heat for these buildings that are really hard to electrify. Actually, so this is a great solution that can be installed, you know, in sort of one to two year uh, time frame can be built and installed and you can sort of decarbonize your heat um, with a solution like this. Carbon Quest now have five uh, new systems, so they see a lot of growth and you can actually visit that system uh, in New York uh, on this in this specific building. So this is an interesting company. You would you might wonder, you know, what they with the CO2, they actually um, transport the CO2 to a local uh, cement manufacturer 
And so the cement, uh, the CO2 gets trapped into the cement and then, you know, get used into build, more build, build buildings um, in New York. So it's kind of a neat example of circular economy. Uh, if you go to the next slide, we have another example of, of a company that makes um, ethanol, methanol, and jet fuel uh, from CO2 and hydrogen. This company is also based in New York, in Brooklyn. They have a one ton per day pilot plant that you can see here on the left of the of the slide and they they started with sort of high margin consumer products like vodka and fragrances that's generate a nice you know baseline revenue and now they have a contract with they have offtake agreements with private airlines like JetBlue um and also just signed a 65 million dollar deal with DOD the Department of Defense to look at how to supply jet fuel to the army um so very exciting company with a new technology that can make you know stuff for industry that are really hard to decarbonize uh, from recycled CO2 or you know, atmospheric CO2 and green hydrogen. You can go to the next slide. These are some of the kind of metrics of the program. Um, you know, the aiding companies have, have raised a significant capital over $300 million over the course of the program. We are really sort of like a business incubator. So we foster connection. We have fostered 150 and more uh, to date connections. And that results in partnerships, investment partnership contracts, um, you know, licensing agreements, uh, pilot projects, um, all these things that are necessary to de-risk the value chain going forward. And so these are some of the, the numbers we are really uh, proud of, um, and we expect more to come in, in the years to come, especially with this year. So you can go to the next slide, and that will be my last slide on the next steps. Uh, we are in our year three cycle. So if you are a startup or emerging company that you think have really disruptive innovation for carbon management, the year three call for application is open until March 31st. You can learn more online on cwinitiative.com. Uh, typically TRL, we call TRL to four to seven. And we do have um, a category for what we call enabling technology. So if you have very good MRV innovation, or if you have a business model innovation that is not necessarily you know, capital intensive, that we are also interested uh, in hearing from you. And, and finally, uh, if you're a large corporate uh, in the room and you're interested to join the Carbon Tech Leadership Council to collaborate with these other industry leaders and access to these cool uh, innovative startups. Um, you can reach out uh, to me or to Pat Sapinski that is in the room. And if you go to the next slide, you should be able to see my, my email. So you can take a, a screenshot of that or a picture and then feel free to message me. Uh, so thanks again, Peter, for the opportunity to present and uh, happy to answer any uh, questions. Questions.